perverse in devotion today, we're still going over um, <clears throat> sexual abstinence. And that if you haven't been sexually abstinent um, up until now, it's not like you can't be forgiven, okay? Uh, as long as you ask for forgiveness. But the scripture verses that I'm going to go over this morning, <clears throat> excuse me, are from Ephesians chapter 5. And the key verse is verse 3, talking about uh, sexual abstinence and things like that. But I'm going to read verses 1 through 7 because I think that gives us the whole picture. Um, one of my teachers in Children's Church that helps out a lot, her name is Michelle, and she made a really good point the other day to some of the kids, and I was like, explain to them why you understand this, because I had given them a verse to take home with them, and it started with rather, and then went on, and she's like, okay, anytime you see that, and she was explaining to the kids, anytime you see rather, that means that there's more to the verse than what you're reading. And I said, well, explain that to them so that they understand that. And so she did. And a lot of times in scripture, if you're a newer Christian and you're just getting into the Bible and you're just starting to learn and working on understanding it, um, scripture can be not a complete thought in the Bible. And what I mean by that is you can read five verses and one of them be labeled verse number two, but it's really part of one whole sentence. So that's kind of what she was explaining to them is that, you know, someone hasn't finished their thought. The writer hasn't finished their thought. But anyway, getting back to the verse, starting with verse one of Ephesians chapter five, we're going to go through verse seven, but our key verse is three. So it says, be imitators of God. If you're going to imitate somebody, that's the person to imitate, okay? Be imitators of God. Therefore, as dearly loved children and live a life of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself, gave himself up for us <clears throat> as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Verse 3 is the, the key verse. But among you, there must not be even a hint of sexual immorality, or of any kind of impurity or of greed because these are improper for God's holy people. Nor should there be obscenity, foolish talk, or coarse joking, which are out of place, but rather thanksgiving. For of this you can be sure. No immoral, impure, or greedy person, such a man is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of such things, God's wrath comes on those who are disobedient. Therefore, do not be partners with them. These seven verses <clears throat> are extremely clear how as Christians we are supposed to live. I mean, it is point blank here. Um, we're supposed to be imitators of God, verse 1. <clears throat> verse 3 says to um, not even have a hint, <laughs> not even a hint of sexual immorality uh, or any kind of impurity, greed, uh, because it's improper for God's holy people. If you're holy, if you're supposed to be God's holy people, you're not going to have this stuff in your lives. Um nor should there be obscenity, foolish talk. How many times do we open up our mouth and say dumb, stupid, foolish stuff? All the time. All the time. Our words matter, and it's true. When I was younger, I didn't know that. I didn't believe that. Now I know because I've read the word enough. Coarse joking, which is out of place, but rather Thanksgiving, being thankful. Um, <clears throat> and it says, such a man is an idolater, has any inheritance... They don't have any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. So if you're acting like this, if you're being this way, that's what it's saying. You don't have inheritance. You're not going to go there. However, there's always a however with Jesus. And that's the best part about this. If you are being sexually active or sexually impure, if there is a hint of um, impurity in your life, 
if you are talking foolishly, coarse joking, obscenity, all those things, if that's going on in your life, all you have to do is ask Jesus to forgive you and to repent. And repent means turn away from it. Don't do it anymore and ask for forgiveness. It's that simple. And it's that easy. If you really sincerely want the change and you want your life to follow Christ, you just have to do that. That's all there is to it.